the question of extending the blessings of the priesthood to those then under restriction had been on the minds of many of the brethren over a period of years. It had repeatedly been brought up by presidents of the church. It had become a matter of particular concern to President Kimball. Over a considerable period of time, he had prayed concerning this serious and difficult question. He had spent many hours in that upper room in the temple by himself in prayer and meditation. On this question, he raised the question before his brethren, his counselors and the apostles. Following this discussion, we joined in prayer in the most sacred of circumstances. President Kimball himself was voice in that prayer. I do not recall the exact words which he spoke, but I do recall my own feelings and the nature of the expressions of my brethren. There was a hallowed and sanctified atmosphere in the room. For me, it felt as if a conduit opened between the heavenly throne and the kneeling, pleading prophet of God who was joined by his brethren. The Spirit of God was there, and by the power of the Holy Ghost there came to that prophet an assurance that the thing for which he prayed was right, that the time had come, and that now the wondrous blessings of the priesthood should be extended to worthy men everywhere, regardless of lineage. I returned home late one night, feeling very discouraged. I felt impressed to listen to the radio. It had been several years since I had tuned into the British Broadcasting Corporation on my shortwave set. It took almost an hour to find the station. From the United States. I finally in found it at midnight. In a news release from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. Church President Spencer W. Kimball announced to worldwide membership that the priesthood will now be extended to all worthy males. This means that the black members of the church, previously denied the opportunity of performing church ordinances, will now be able to participate in all church programs. Unanimously supported by the church's 12 apostles, the policy is effective immediately. The forecast showers and thunderstorms. Tremendous eternal consequences for millions over the earth are flowing from that manifestation. This is but the beginning of greater things to come as the truth of the restored gospel covers the earth as the waters cover the mighty deep.
We say to all who have joined the church, keep all that is noble, good, and uplifting in your culture and personal identity. However, under the authority and power of the keys of the priesthood, all differences yield as we seek to become heirs to the kingdom of God. Unite in following those who have the keys of the priesthood and seek the divinity within us. We believe in God, the eternal Father, and in His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost. We believe in being honest, true, chaste, benevolent, virtuous, and in doing good to all men. We believe in being subject to kings, presidents, rulers, and magistrates, in obeying, honoring, and sustaining the law. Our real strength is not so much in our diversity, but in our spiritual and doctrinal unity.